So I've had a really weird career twist in the last couple of years. As you know, I'm the New York Times gadget columnist. I, for 12 years, I've been reviewing phones and tablets and computers and web services. And all of a sudden, starting two years ago, I've become the, the face of science on PBS for, for Nova. And I'm not a scientist, and I didn't do well in science. And so you're wondering, what the hell is this guy doing here? So the, the fact is that we have a science problem in America. Um, Oh, I'm just getting started. <laughs> they, they don't believe in evolution. They don't believe in global warming. Uh, in terms of rankings and science scores in schools, America is down there somewhere like below lower Slobovia. We're like number 65. Um, the scientists and the, the media people, <laughs> yeah. My father, ladies and gentlemen. Um, ever, we are very concerned about science in this country because uh, it's not just a, a matter of, of dogma and a matter of principle, like we should be the best, damn it. No, it's, it's our competitive advantage. I mean, what, what is success in business if it isn't innovation? And these days, what is success in, in America if it's not technological success? What is the biggest company in the world? It's Apple. It's a science and technology company. So science is, we lose science, we lose business, we lose our, our place in the world. So um, I am, as I mentioned, an unlikely choice for a science host. Um, but the story is really interesting. The National Science Foundation is your tax dollars at work. This is the branch of the government that gives grants to science projects, including TV shows and documentaries. And they uh, offered PBS a $3 million grant to make a, uh, a mini-series about a, a branch of science that was just emerging back in 2001, known as materials science, and this is what it is, an interdisciplinary field involving the properties of matter and its applications in various areas of science and engineering, this is the relationships between the structure of materials at the atomic or molecular scales and their macroscopic properties. Well, that just screams television, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, that is Jersey Shore waiting to happen. <laughs> it was considered unfilmable. So for nine years, Nova took that check and laid it in a shelf somewhere and did not make the show for nine years. So 2010, the, the grant was about to expire and they said, okay, guys, we have to, you know, we're gonna lose it, lose this money, we have to do something with it. Let's punt, let's break with tradition, let's make a show out of this. So they hired this guy. This is Chris Schmidt, he's, he's, he's a producer, he's a science producer, he's worked for Discovery and Nova and, and National Geographic. What do, you, what do you call an idiot savant who's not an idiot? Like, that's this guy. He's like, this, the, the thoughts just beam out of his brain like the Statue of Liberty at night. It's just unbelievable how smart and how funny he is. And he had this, had this idea. He's like, look, you don't think the normal Nova um, setup is going to work where it's just the voice of God narrating documentary footage. Okay, that's not going to work with material science. We need to shake things up. Tell you what, we'll get a host, we'll get a non-scientist, who's the, the representative of the viewers, somebody who's curious and maybe funny, and we stick him in there with the scientists and grill him and don't let him get away with sh stuff. And <laughs> so they had no choice. They're like, fine, Chris, we trust you. Do something with this. So he had seen me do some CBS Sunday morning stuff and some talks, so he hired me. And, and his concept was, let's take each of these scientific principles and, make, and, and then insert our host in his dangerous, <laughs> and life-threatening situations as we possibly can. <laughs> People will watch that. Um, so this is the trailer for the show. Oh, I forgot to tell the Makers, Maker Fair people we have audio. We have audio. We have audio! Oh, great. <laughs> Does anyone at this fair know anything about science or technology? Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> No offense intended. <laughs> Thank you, sir, Mr. Science and Technology. So I'll show you a little bit of this. Oops, a little louder. Here in Grand Bahama, it's just another day at the office. 
and this is serious business. Do you have a history of bleeding? I do have a history of bleeding. Every time I get cut, without fail. <laughs> I'm the only one on this crew who's not getting a suit of chainmail. We are here on a quest to unlock the secrets of shark skin. That's right, sharks are covered with tiny scales that somehow repel microbes. They're the inspiration for a technology that could be coming soon to a hospital near you. This surface mimics the texture of shark skin. In a lab, the advantages are clear. It keeps deadly bacteria at bay. Bacteria can't colonize and proliferate. The physical modification of the surface is not allowing them to do that. Just so that's unbelievably cool. So they discover that on sharks, nothing grows. No bacteria, no barnacles, nothing grows. And so the, this, this uh, marine biologist in Florida we interviewed said, well, my colleagues all said, well, yeah, it's because they move too fast. He's like, well, no, because whale sharks and <coughs> nurse sharks, it's got to be something deeper than that. And so he analyzed it under the electron microscope and found out that a shark's skin is made up of these tiny walls and grooves that you saw there. And he thought, you know what I should do? I should make a synthetic version of this. They could put that on ships and they wouldn't grow with that biofouling stuff. They wouldn't, there wouldn't be stuff gunking up the ships, slowing them down, using more fuel. And that, that like shipping is like a, a, a billion dollar industry. So one of his grad students goes, a professor, there's an even bigger industry. There's a trillion dollar industry that could benefit from a material where bacteria can't grow. Healthcare! <laughs> Make this material and put it on door handles and bed rails and floors and walls. And you guys have heard of MRSA? Um, and this is a, a resistant strain of bacteria, meaning no antibiotic in the world can kill it. Yes, we've gotten to the point where we gave our two-year-olds antibiotics so often for such trivial reasons that now we have bred superbugs that cannot be killed by um, antibiotics. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but last year MRSA killed more people than AIDS. It is scary as hell. You get it when you go to the hospital. You go in with one problem, you come out with another one. So. What we're trying to do is kill the bacteria in the hospitals with chemicals, and all we can do is kill 99%. So the 1% that are left, multiply, breed, and now we've got a super bug. So this guy's idea is instead of just killing the bacteria with chemicals, we put this material everywhere, we just ask the bacteria to go somewhere else. And so we don't get MRSA. So anyway, fantastic stories. One way that nature. And so um, this was the series, it was, it was four, yeah, I know, I'm like, the love child of Stephen Colbert and Charlton Heston. And, and <laughs> so um, there, were, there were four episodes, making stuff smarter, making stuff stronger, making stuff cleaner, making stuff smaller. And um, to everybody's astonishment, this Frankenstein non-traditional Nova show, 40 years this show's been on without an air, without, with nothing but a narrator, all of a sudden, here comes this hosted show with these extreme situations. It gets the highest ratings in seven years. And it just blew everybody away. So, oh, yes, thank you, Nelson. It's all, Chris Schmidt gets that applause. So um, they decided, even though it was a one-time grant, they decided to make four more of them. Um, and these are going to be, we're, we're starting shooting next month. And these are going to be called Making Stuff Colder. Uh, like maglev trains and stuff. Uh, I, I'm not sure about making stuff colder. Chris was telling me about, oh, we've got these great shots for you. So in one, we're going to stick a thermometer probe down your throat, into your intestines, and then we're going to drop you into sub-freezing water. <laughs> and we're going to monitor you. You know, we're, we're going to pull you out just before your heart stops. So you don't have anything to worry about. <laughs> How about making stuff more comfortable? Um, so I'm not sure I'm looking forward to that one, but anyway, making stuff faster, making stuff wilder, and making stuff safer, which sounds like super boring until you, you know Chris Schmidt. Um, how do you illustrate safe? Well, you make it really dangerous! <laughs> so he, he mentioned to me, like, there's this, uh, this motorcycle uniform you can put on, and we'll put you on the back of a motorcycle on the highway and push you off, and, <laughs> and on route down to the pavement, it instantly blows up like the Michelin Man. And you just go boom, 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 boom. It'll be awesome. <laughs> so to tide us over, because it takes a year to get the funding from the NSF, we decided to make some other shows with the same team. So we made Hunting the Elements. That aired in April. 
another <laughs> sing and dance and topic, the periodic table of the elements for two hours. <laughs> And um, all of these shows, by the way, are available for free at pbs.org. No ads, beautiful quality, your tax dollars, yeah. And then the really exciting thing is that then, based on the success of those shows, I was made the new host of Nova Science Now, which is a spin-off series that starts on October 10th at 10. It's easy to remember. It's binary. <laughs> so six amazing episodes. So anyway, so the point is, that the idea was to, to deliver the science with an entertainment factor. And this might sound like a logical formula it did to me, but it did not rub everybody in the right way, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. So as you saw, they sent me down to handle these sharks to illustrate the shark skin principle. Um, you might notice in the film, uh, I'm sitting there with my hands under my armpits. Um, and the reason is that they, I was told the trainer is going to wave bloody fish guts around. They're gonna wave chum to attract these sharks, these 13-foot reef sharks. So she said, as we dive into the water, she goes, and by the way, don't wave your hands. <laughs> you know, because the sharks would think that I had food too. So I'm like. <laughs> I mean, it was the scaredest I've ever been. Because, because if this is the trainer right here, okay, and I'm beyond her here, the shark does this. Do you have any too? You know, like, <laughs> like, turn right at the last minute. It got warm right around my water. <laughs> <sighs> Scary as all get up. <clears throat> I wish I could do it again. Um, so then we landed on an aircraft carrier to illustrate the tensile strength of steel. As you may know, your, your aircraft your jet lands on the deck of this tiny ship. Uh, it's caught by a one inch thick piece of cable wire. One inch. And those, those they have an, a mean time between failure, those wires. They last, you know, so many thousand landings and then it pops like it did in like 1993. We show it on the show, one of these things, one of these planes lands on the runway. And by the way, they land at full power. They don't slow down, they speed up. Do you know why? Because if the hook misses the cable, they got to be ready to take off again. <laughs> so they land, they accelerate into the landing. And we have this footage where the cable popped, poof, $50 million into the water. The guy ejected out to safety, fortunately. Um, so, uh, and then to further illustrate the tensile strength of steel, they had me ride in the back seat of a demolition derby car. Um, I went hang gliding. We talked about wing shapes of birds. Um, for Nova Science Now, one of the shows, each show asks a, a question, a philosophical question, and one of them was, what makes us different from the animals? And one of the common ins, uh, answers is laughter. We laugh, animals don't. Not technically true, but we went to the Cincinnati Zoo and we tried it. I told it elephant jokes. Um, <laughs> and then I got to tickle a, uh, a baby penguin. Yeah, you'll want to watch this show, ladies. Um, <laughs> So they gave me this baby penguin, and um, I'm like doing this to it, and he's going, <laughs> and I look at the zookeeper, and I'm like, I'm amazing. I made it laugh. And the guy's going, I'm like, what? He goes, you're, you're not making it laugh. You're arousing it. Um, they have discovered that bee venom is an incredible anti-cancer drug. It kills cancer cells. If you can just deliver the particle of bee venom to the cells by bonding it with other molecules, which they're doing, they're a year away from human trials. Um, so <laughs> how do we illustrate this? Of course, they stick me in a swarm of 100,000 nasty bees. Um, I fired an AK-47. I rode the world's fastest electric motorcycle without the Michelin man suit, by the way. Um, I gotta tell you about this, one, one of the most fascinating subjects. Um, there's this stuff called uh, magnetorheological fluid, or MR fluid, or Mr. Fluid, as I like to call it, um, <laughs> which is this nasty, greasy motor oil with tiny metal particles dissolved in it, such that if you apply an, a magnetic force to it, it hardens. And you can dial back the hardness uh, of this fluid according to how much electromagnetic force you put on it. So what they're doing is they're putting this into shock absorbers for high-end cars and military vehicles in Iraq 
because these guys have to drive over these deserts for three hours to get to the battle site, and th the soldiers themselves are a mess when they get out. They're like, oh, let's not do that again. So this is um, an example. This is uh, an early cut. You're hearing the uh, an editor. How do you make the seat recline anyway? <laughs> tickets to this thing. For round two, the Humvee gets Lord's shock absorbers. Flexible reactions built right into the material. Ah, this is nothing. How do I adjust the AC? So that's just amazing stuff. I mean, you should see this stuff. I mean, it looks like nasty black motor oil when you're pouring it, but then like into a pie tin. Then they put a magnet under the pie tin, and it turns into a stalactite. It just freezes like that. So anyway, when we got to this company that's doing this, the scientist lady thought she would play a joke on me. She had a cup of this nasty stuff, and hidden in her hand was a magnet. So she thought it would be a real riot to pretend to throw the cup of motor oil on my shirt. But of course, the magnet would harden the stuff and nothing would fly out of the cup. So this is a what happened. A smoothie comes in gray. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I mean, the entire Clorox factory could not save that shirt. Um, so that didn't make the air. So anyway. Um, but geckos are another amazing, amazing thing. You know, their feet, they can, they can support 200 times their own weight on glass. Like, and, and yet the feet are not sticky. They're not sticky. You feel it feels like your own skin. So how are they doing it? Well, it turns out the feet have ribs, and the ribs have ribs, and the ribs have ribs, and the ribs, there's feathering down to five layers. And there's this um, Van der Graaff force, this very, very light, almost like static electricity force that adds up and lets this thing cling. And so uh, we went into a green screen and talked about how the military is trying to harness this power. Think of if our guys could have gloves and stuff and, and could climb buildings and spies. So that's what it looked like when we filmed it. And here's what we looked like when it was done. But come on, we all know the real reason to develop gecko adhesives. So you can do this. Okay, I'm busted. Nobody has gecko gloves this good. At least, nobody who's talking. <coughs> Military. <laughs> <laughs> so, for Nova Science now, <coughs> one of the, in, in the what makes us human discussion, uh, we're trying to trace back, I don't know if you're aware of this, but almost everyone in this room has between 2 and 4% Neanderthal DNA in them. So guys, when you leave your underwear on the floor, now you have an excuse. Yeah. That's just my Neanderthal side. Um, so they thought it would be cute to illustrate that the fact that Neanderthals live on by having an a industrial light and magic former makeup artist make me up as a Neanderthal. So that starts by making a, a face mold of my head, and then they built this, these latex parts to go on that, and the result was, was that. So. <laughs> And they, they set me loose on the streets of San Francisco, walking among the crowd. And they concluded the day by having me go to the rotating restaurant at the top of the, top of the town and playing cocktail piano. <laughs> My favorite is this guy. I'm trying to eat my shrimp, pal. You know. um, we studied um, on, on the crime episode, Can Science Stop Crime is one of the Nova Science Now episodes. So we know that the polygraph, the lie detector, is illegal in 49 states. You can't use it in court. It's too unreliable. It's too fakeable. So um, at the FBI headquarters, they're trying to come up with new technologies that will <laughs> let you catch. So this is really cool. This is an eye tracker. They show you pictures of people well-known and people you don't know. 
And it turns out when it's somebody you know, your eyes instinctively go in a triangle like this. You look at the person's eyes, nose, and mouth. If you see someone, a stranger, your eyes take in the entire thing, your ears, your hair, your chin. You do much bigger scanning. So they can ask the perp, have you see, ever seen this guy before? And they'll find out. Another really amazing one, get this. They show the perp a photo of the crime scene in which the body has been photoshopped into another place in the room. Only the perpetrator's eyes will flick to where it used to be. It's totally brilliant. Yes, thank you, I invented that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is uh, another way, they're, they're actually, yeah, I know, it's, uh, it was a salon before a shoot. Yeah. It le left what they call elevate, uh, uh, octopus hickeys on me, yeah. Um, so they can, they can actually look at your brain and see when somebody's about to lie, your brain does this little light up back here, this little light, uh, light up in a place that doesn't normally light up when you're about to lie. So they can also tell that. Um, they had me uh, do a race against a homing pigeon. It was completely awesome. They gave me an SUV and a compass, and of course the homing pigeon beat me. Um, then um, I just finished a book. Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, all right, so I'll just tell you. So the, the humor content of these shows was very controversial. Inside PBS, outside PBS. Um, we did a, a sneak preview of making stuff in Washington, D.C., in an auditorium for PBS fans and Nova fans, and there was this guy who stood up, and he was older and very sincere and very agitated. He goes, I've been watching Nova for 38 years! What is this crap? He, he didn't like it, and I get that, I get that. They're, we're serving it up with a spoonful of sugar, and many people feel that it shouldn't be served that way, that science is science, science is serious. And so because of that, there was a lot of stuff that, um, that, that, I mean, it was a really intelligent, thoughtful, long discussion inside WGBH and NOVA that still goes on for NOVA Science Now. I think they came out with a good balance, but this is some of the stuff you will never see. I just finished Blooper a reel. book today. 900 pages and just about dead. So take this manuscript, shove it up your O'Reilly. Manuscript done and I don't goddamn care. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh. David doesn't have a book over his head. <laughs> so we've just done our little test in the tank there. And what we're gonna do now. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. That was just for the blooper reel. We like to get some material. <laughs> Commence the glass breaking test. Gorilla glass. It's gorilla glass. Oh! <laughs> I wasn't ready. I understand that this is where the disease mono first evolved. It, it did indeed. Wait. Settled into the lymph nodes of a woman named Manisha. <laughs> no. By yeah, your, I'm father. your father. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> oh, no. It's coming out of his knee. <laughs> Me? And, no. Just to me. Oh! I'm gonna flip it upside down and put it into a state of tonic immobility. Honey, gonna... just think, you're having sex. Should I worry that my gloves are on fire? <laughs> uh, a little problem. <laughs> the bottle fell in the fake pee and splashed me. Why is it that our, our lungs are not exploding out of our chest? Because what you're breathing is N2 and O2. Not NO3, because that would kill you. <laughs> that um, would kill you, David. And so it's the... You the, would die. So that would be bad? You wouldn't be able to talk anymore. <laughs> what are you suggesting? You can just let her go. Fly, let be go. free. Oh, great. She's stuck that way. <laughs> so we set up all the mouse traps here, and we put ping pong balls on each one of those mouse traps. It simulates a nuclear chain reaction. <laughs> and that's a nuclear chain reaction, folks. That way, dumb <laughs> Don't. <laughs> so, anyway, all right, I know I gotta get up. So, um, Anyway, so the results, as I mentioned, were uh, the Element show got even better ratings than Making Stuff. Um, so the bottom line is, how do I feel about entertainment and science? Look, 
People are frightened by what they don't understand. That's what the evolution debate is. That's what the global warming debate is. And um, at the same time, we know that science is very cool. I mean, won't you remember at least a couple of these scientific points we talked about today? I mean, the MR fluid or the geckos. I mean, this is really cool stuff. So there is always pushback. This came in the day before yesterday. Your Riley books are great. New York Times articles are great. POS Curves are great. But your humor is so bad, I just have to let you know. Um, so I put up with... <laughs> Try watching as if you're not you, Bob. So we put up against these forces, and it is, of course, an enormous amount of travel and work. I mean, I was just gone so long. I came back. Wait, how many kids did I have? Um, so... At the same time, is it worth it? Are we on the right track? Well, this is my answer. This is a, a, an email from a dad. My seven-year-old daughter, Eva, may be one of your biggest fans. Last spring, when PBS aired Making Stuff, she got hooked. We had to buy the DVD. We've watched it several times a week <laughs> for the entire year. She's been in a state of extreme anticipation. She's seven! Uh, <laughs> anticipation to see Hunting the Elements as it aired. She could not be budged from the program by thirst, hunger, or crying baby sister. Well past her bedtime. Today we found out you'd be visiting our home state of Oklahoma next week for five hours. She talked about nothing but science elements and getting your autograph next Wednesday. Me, you would be a highlight of her life thus far. <laughs> <coughs> so why do we do the travel and the grant funding and the, and the putting up with, with, the, uh, with the haters? This is why. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great fair.